Hallelujah. We are no longer slaves to fear, but children of the living God. Glory be to God. God bless you, brothers and sisters. It's wonderful to be here this afternoon here to share with you God's word. As you listen to that song, I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. Glory be to God. God bless you, friends and, and brothers and sisters around the world. I bring you greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm so excited that we could have this section this afternoon to speak about God's word. Today we want to look at the heart of the Father. Glory be to God. The heart of the Father is beautiful. If you haven't watched the video I made last Friday, I spoke about Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us. You need that message. And it's going to be connected to this very message. Hallelujah. And so today we want to look at the hearts of the Father. And that is in Psalm 103. The Father's heart. And I want to begin to read to you the scripture here. It says, Praise the Lord my soul. All my inmost being praise his holy name. Praise the Lord my soul and forget not all his benefit. Who forgive all your sins and heal all your diseases. Who redeem your life from the pit and crown you with love and compassion. Who satisfy your desire with good things so that your youth is renewed like eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. Glory be to God. So here the psalm is he is telling us to praise the Lord. For what purpose? Why should we praise God? He begins to tell us the heart of the Father. He says, who forgive all your sins in verse 3. Oh, and heal all your diseases. He forgive all our sins and, and heal all our diseases. Who redeem our life from the pit and crown us with love and compassion. This is why we praise the name of the Father who satisfy your desires with good things oh, and renew your youth like a nigger. Say the Lord walk righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. Glory be to God. And you remember the oppressed there, he talks about how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, who went about doing good, healing all who are all praised of the devil, for God was with him. So the Father showed us love and kindness. He made known his ways to Moses, his deed to the children of Israel. Oh, the Lord! is compassionate and gracious that is the heart of the father the lord is compassionate and gracious towards us hallelujah God, what is he he said he made his ways known done to moses his deed to the people of israel the lord is compassionate and gracious slow to anger abounding in love he will not always accuse his earth, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sin deserve, or repay us according to our iniquities. Glory be to God. You see what he says? He says the Lord heart is full of compassion and is gracious to us. He will never treat us as we deserve. He forgive our sins. And that takes us back to Genesis. Oh, praise God. I wish you have understanding of what I'm about to say. 
In Genesis, when the Father had created the heavens and the earth and all the firmament and the creatures, the Father made Adam in his own image and likeness and gave him this world as his domain, as a gift from the Father. And he instructed him how to live. I want you to see the father heart. He instructed him how to live in this kingdom he has made for him. And then the enemy came and deceived him and, and turned him against the father. And the scripture says in the middle of the cool of the day, the father came calling upon his son and said, My son Adam, Adam, where are thou? And I'm saying, I heard your voice and I heed myself. And the father said, have you done what I ask you not to do? Oh, Adam said, yes, the woman you gave me. And the woman said, yes, the snake you made. So all the blame go back to the father. <laughs> the father could just smash and, and destroy Adam because it was the work of his hand. He can just smash him and destroy him and throw him out of the garden and bury him and there will be no more Adam and Eve. That's not what the father did. The father was compassionate and gracious. There was his son that he has made. He forgave all his sins, all his iniquities. Glory be to God. And delivered him from that oppressor, the wicked one who came to deceive him. That's the question a lot of people ask. Why did God didn't just destroy Adam and make a new man? They didn't know. They have no idea who God is. Because for God, the, prob the, the, the thing with him is, the problem is not a problem for him. He has a solution. And so his heart towards Adam and Eve was gracious and compassionate. Because he made them. He know the Bible says, for our days are like the flower that grew up in the morning. And in the afternoon, that flower is gone. Oh, the father looked at Adam and Eve. And he, he saw that they have disobeyed him. But what can he do? They are his children. Hallelujah. What can he do? They are his children. He was moved with compassion. And then he begin to mark out the plan of salvation. Oh, oh, thank you, Father, a million times. And he says, For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he know how we are formed. He remember that we are dust. Hallelujah. I want you to understand that the Father loves you. Regardless of what you've done, where you have been, the Father loves you. He says, as the east is far away from the west, so far he has removed our transgressions from us in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. There is nothing he cannot do. Even at the time where Jesus hasn't come, how did he manage with the sins of Adam and Eve? Do you see that? So a lot of people must understand the grace of God is just beyond what we know. How did he cleanse their sins and forgive them and brought them into his kingdom? God's plan is bigger. He removed their sins far away as he is far from the west. Oh, praise be the Lord. 
He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. So great is the love of God. The Father heart is a heart of compassion and, and kindness. He is gracious to us. I want to show you something. Jesus spoke about the story of, uh, of a young man in Luke chapter 15. And this young man have this young man have a father who was raised. He has two sons. And one of the sons said, Father, I want my share of inheritance so that when you die I don't have to struggle with my brother for what I need <laughs> and the father said okay the father didn't argue didn't struggle he simply did what the son asked and the son of he goes he began to spend the money enjoy his life lavishly and while he was gone his father from time to time he's watching for his son to come home. And his son have went to enjoy him. The money finished. He became poor and started starving. And to the point that he almost be eating the food that was offered to pigs. And he said, oh no. In my father house there is abundance. Why would I starve here? And he says, I will arise and go to my father. Let me show you the scripture. And I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. And I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servant. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion on him and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto his father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight. I am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servant, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. Glory be to God. Oh, what a beautiful father. Here, while the son was on his way coming, the father saw him. The Bible says he had compassion on him and ran towards the son. So the father had compassion on you who is watching, you who remember that he exists, you who thought about him and want to come back to him. He is waiting for you. His heart is full of compassion. He is full of graciousness and forgiveness. He said, no matter what we do, he removes our sins as far as the east is from the west. He took them away. He took them away. And so you might be in a place where you don't know what to do. You've done something that you feel condemned. The Father loves you. He will have compassion on you. All you need to do is like that son. He said, Father, I have sinned against you. He confesses his sin. The Father has he is so compassionate towards us that the only thing that he requests is, Father, I'm sorry. Regardless of what you've done, the Father has done it. In Jesus Christ, he has completed. Let me show you what Jesus did. And one time Jesus, doing his ministry, the Bible says in Luke chapter, in Matthew chapter 9, he says, when he saw the people, Jesus was moved with compassion and had mercy on them. The heart of the Father is a heart of compassion towards you. No matter what you've done, no matter where you've been, like that son who ran away and, and spent all that he had, all the riches, 
the Father still forgives him because he is merciful and kind. The Father heart is a merciful heart. And as a Christian, the Father loves you. And his compassion is towards you. No matter what you've done, where you've been, he is faithful to forgive you your sins. Just come home to him. Glory be to God. He loves you. And if you don't know God, some of you think that God is an angry God sitting there and, and looking to smash you. No. Now in Christ, he has forgiven our sins. In John 1, 29 says, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. The Father he is having compassion and mercy towards us. Now is the acceptable time. So if you want to give your life to Jesus, the Father will have compassion on you. He knows how you were formed. All you need to say is, Heavenly Father, I come to you today. I have sinned against heaven and before you. Please forgive me. Please have mercy on me. I want to follow you. I want to obey you. As you say that, he will receive you and forgive you, just as he did to his son in Luke 15. And he forgave all his sin and put on him the best robe, that robe of righteousness. He will put it on you today. Glory be to God. We have such a lovely father. And so may the Lord bless you. May the Lord be with you. If you are struggling from your faith with God, God is not counting your sin against you. He doesn't treat you as your sin deserves. He is compassionate and will forgive you. He will forgive you. Hallelujah. He will forgive you. God's heart towards you is compassionate. Glory be to God. So Father, we thank you today and those who are watching who are in different circumstances. I pray, Father, that your love will touch them. That their mind will be able to receive the truth that as high as the heavens are above the earth, so your love for us who fear you is so great that you will not treat us as our sin deserve, but you're always compassionate and mercy towards us. I pray right now in the name of Jesus that be free from accusation of the enemy. Receive the love of God. Receive a touch from the Father. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father, that you gave Jesus to make it possible for us to come close to you. Blessed be your name. Hallelujah. In the coming weeks, we are entering, um, you know, the, the East. And so we will be uh, sending out the schedule for the Easter meeting too explain more about the work of salvation and and the great love of God for us in Christ Jesus is amazing if you understand these things it will change your life forever hallelujah so may the Lord bless you and may the peace of God rest upon you and God bless you for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. You are watching GSM TV.